I was taken a bit by surprise at how good the FPS games in March are looking, and I hope that this video will be able to surprise you as well. I'm pretty sure it will. So what do you say we do this? Let's -a do it! I'm actually not 100% sure what to make of this one. I think it's a student project, at least the website points to that. Nonetheless, it looks pretty damn cool, and it could turn out to be a free, short, but very cool experience. So I at least wanted to show you guys this one. As you can see, this is not our traditional shooter. This is a bow and arrow type of game featuring puzzles, mutated demonic animals and magic, all set in the beautiful Himalayas, which actually is enough to get me excited. Outpost is an interesting one that I have been keeping an eye on for a very long time. It's a blend of first person shooter meets tower defense and base building. It's a fairly unexplored concept, although it is not unique, it has been done before. But Outpost seems to take the formula and really elevate it with the heaviest focus being on the first person shooter part of it all. But what really has me psyched about this one though, is the Starship Troopers vibes. Building a super sci-fi mobile base loaded with cannons and just swarms of bugs attacking you from every corner. I mean, Stuff like that really gets my nerves tingling in the good way. But there is something that scares me in this game, and that is that it has a lot of depth to it. And I truly, truly hope that you don't have to be a professor to actually understand all of it. Taking all of these genres and mixing them can be a tough nut to crack, considering you can make a full-fledged game with any of them. Then combining them can make everything just feel overwhelming and super complex. And to make matters worse in that regard, it's not like you have just a couple of loadouts that you can choose from. Oh no, you have your very own inventory system with weapons and items that all have different rarities and stats to them, mixing in some RPG elements to it all. Now I can't tell you how well everything is executed as I haven't played the game yet, but I fear it looks to be overwhelming. Overwhelming but fun. Now are you excited to find out how it all turns out? Let's discuss it down in the comments. We stand guard against humanity's extinction. We are the last out. Now some of you might remember this one, Crux, Crux the Infamous. It's finally releasing and some time ago I covered its demo. The thing is this, it ended up on my naughty video where I featured some of the worst games that I had played in recent times. That said though, this was the game with the most potential in that video. And the developer actually reached out to me, giving me early access to the full game. And due to the developer actually taking the criticism in a cool way, I decided it's time to check it out again. So here are my opinions on the early access release of Crux. Alright my friends, here we go, Crux. I just finished the third arena because I wanted to get further than we were in the demo, but the starting area, it was exactly the same as in the demo. You have a little hub area and you can activate perks there and then go into the arena and that is everything that you can do. So far we got the same three weapons as we did in the demo. They still feel very very poor, the audio is very very poor on them. We got these perks, every time we enter a new level we get new perks. I really like these perks and I like the perk system that you can activate them before going into arena in the hub world. But honestly, honestly, that is what I like the most about the game. I mean listen to this, listen. Tell me if you think that sounds good or not. I think it sounds really really poor. And the enemies, they, they literally, they don't even react to getting hit. They don't even flinch at all. Not even by the shotgun. Okay, he died. See, they don't react. Nothing. 
I'm not getting anything from them. And things like that, the polish of the game, it needs to be much, much higher. You need to polish up the weapons. The enemies need a lot more polish. They feel so incredibly basic and it feels like a shell of a game as it is right now. The music is really cool, however. I have to give the game that. The music is cool, the arenas, they look cool, but they are also incredibly small, incredibly basic. We got some jump points here and there, but there really is no use, no, no, no reason to use them. Why? Well, because there are, there is ammo and health and armor scattered out everywhere. All you really need to do is move away for three seconds and you will be refilled and good to go again. There is no mechanics to encourage mechanics in the game to encourage you to do anything but run around and shoot. It is as basic as it gets. I, I, I don't like saying it, but I have to be honest. The developer seems like a really cool guy because this game was featured in a video that I did that featured some games that I thought was poor. This one was in it and the developer still reached out saying, hey, I'm releasing the game into early access now. The demo was not in the final state and I do see a lot of improvements from the demo. The demo was a lot worse than this is. The audio was a lot worse than it is in here. But it's still not good. I cannot tell you guys that it is good because it isn't good and it doesn't feel good either. Okay, we got the boss, and the boss has some kind of shield. First actual mechanic to the game. And this is the first time I'm experiencing this this level, these enemies. I will say though that the enemy variation seems to be <laughs> spot on. We have already seen at least 10 different enemies, and we are only in the fourth level. Can't tell you how many levels there are in the game, but I sure hope there are more, considering how small the levels actually are. What happened? I'm stuck. Okay. Yeah, I, I was stuck there for a minute. I have no idea what happened. So now we're just gonna walk away for a couple of seconds, we're gonna refill and then we will be good to go again. Oh, I wonder if I got stuck in his shield skull. With a lot more polish to the enemies and the combats and the weapons, this... I mean, we could be looking at a fun game, no doubt. And I, I would be lying if I said I wasn't having fun, I am having fun, but it still feels, everything just feels very very poor. Very, very low quality. That was that. Captain's blog. I've been wondering for what seems like hours. If I don't find some water soon, I'm in danger of becoming a little thirsty. This, my friends, this right here, this has me so freakishly hyped. Wrath and of Ruin aside, it's been a while since I was this hyped for a game. I'm going to do my best to explain why, because I know at first glance, not all of you are instantly hooked by this one. But trust me when I say that there is a shit ton more to this game than first meets the eye. So to begin, this game has been developed during the span of seven years by three amazingly talented people. And what is so baffling about that is that this game holds the quality of a studio man with with 50 developers. The graphics, they are colorful, with a 50s sci-fi future art style, looking a bit like Ratchet and Clank in some aspects, but detailed, well modeled, greatly lit with excellent texture work. It also has combat like a proper boomer shooter, crazy weapons, minimal ADS, great level design with verticality, jump pads and a fast speed. But this is where the Ratchet similarity really kicks in. The weapons. Each weapon is upgradable. You can upgrade them by using them. The more you use a weapon, the more XP it gets, and the more it levels up changing both how it handles and how it looks and some of them well they are beyond crazy in the looks and to me this just adds so much excitement to the game i love it but we are far from done here the game offers a 
ton more. You can also upgrade the weapon's capacity, buy new ones and other stuff at a certain merchant in the game. It's not anything overcomplicated, but a great addition to the game. Then we have a ton of minigames as well. Minigames that blends perfectly into the game, often rewarding you with a crazy weapon if completed. I mean, just take the demo as an example. You can take a little detour from the otherwise linear path to play some basketball, or cue ball as the game like to call it. Win that game and voila, you got a brand spanking new weapon to use. And sprinkled into this mix is a ton of comedy, bullet hell action, bosses, and just pure freaking fun. That was cool. Now this right here is actually a not so bad COD Zombies like game. I mean I know we got a lot of bad clones out there, but this one places amongst the better ones. There is a playtest running as I'm writing the script for you to try out if it's still running when you watch the video. But keep in mind that this is a solo developed game. For being a solo developed game it certainly doesn't feel like one. This holds incredibly high quality, especially when it comes to its gunplay. The guns they both feel and look quite amazing and there is a whooping 16 of them in the game. And sprinkled into the mix we got some crazy grenades and abilities that just adds a little bit more fun into the mix. But to get them, you have to gamble. And remember, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. So go wild or crazy, my brutal bratskis. Now the downside to the game is that the levels, well, they are fairly basic. Very early COD zombies like, with enemies spawning from every direction, getting stronger the longer you survive. Luckily though, there is three different game modes. Not all that innovative, but they will challenge you in different ways. And honestly, even if not so innovative i'm glad that they are there because my biggest problem with wave based games is that i get tired of them very quickly and adding a progression with permanent upgrades or different game modes keeps me engaged for longer March seems to be the month of combining different genres, eh? Here we got a first person shooter and tower defense game mixed into one. This one is a lot simpler than the likes of Outpost though, but this one is on the other hand developed by a micro studio with the lead designer being Sean Noonan, the mastermind behind titles such as Super 1-1 and The Interval. And those are actually great fun boomer shooters, if you haven't checked them out, you should. Oh, and they are completely free. Now Sentry takes us on a spaceship, a spaceship that needs defending from aliens. It can of course be played in co-op if one wishes to and it works like this you need to defend your ship one segment at a time build up defenses in the form of different turrets traps and other fun things load up your loadout with different weapons abilities and utilities all managed by an in-game currency and a really cool thing about the game is its death system so say that you die the game won't pause because of that it will keep playing itself while you wake up in a cloning chamber so what might have happened while the game kept playing is that the aliens managed to take control over the segment that you were trying to defend and they are now trying to take over another part of the ship this mechanic mechanic just makes the game feel so alive and like your actions really matter. It's actually a genius mechanic if I may say so. Now there is a demo out so you can test this bad boy out, and I did. And I loved it, and I can't wait to play the full thing. But I want to know, did you play the demo yet? What are your thoughts on it? Let's talk about it. Hey, do you enjoy indie first person shooters just as much as I do? Do you love to just find those hidden gems that are scattered throughout the interwebs? Do you love catching up on news in regards to indie first person shooters and other games for that matter? Do you love hanging around awesome people with the same interest as you? If you check those boxes, well, what the frick are you waiting for? Join the Discord, linked in the description, right now. Quack Attack is looking like a fine, fine madhouse for the Bratskis. This free-to-play arena shooter really aims for the fun factor. You don't have to be a pro to play this, all you need is humor and someone to play with. The game it features animals as characters, which, uh, yeah, it fits the quirky tone of the game, but it doesn't appeal to me one bit running around as a giraffe. But what does appeal to me is that the limbs, they can be dismembered, and they will be flying all around the place. But the game has a twist though, this, 
this doesn't play as your traditional arena shooter. There are a lot of weird and crazy mechanics to the game that I won't go into detail on, that's for us to experience when we actually play the game. But the main one is this, to win a game of Quack Attack you need to collect ducks. Ducks that are scattered throughout the arena, and every time you die, you lose your ducks. And the one with the most amount of ducks at the end of a round, wins. Meaning, it's not about kills or skills, it's about navigation and smart thinking. And I mean, that could get boring really fast or stay fun for a very long time. Only time can truly tell, but I think this looks like it could offer a fine time, especially considering it is completely free. This, my friends, is built on a custom engine. A custom engine that manages to look absolutely gorgeous at times. As you can see, it's heavy on the voxels, but for good reason. It adds so much destruction to the world and the enemies. And something I haven't really seen before in a voxel-based game, and that is its animations. Now, I won't show them to you, I will leave it for our stream that we will have late March. But let me just tell you again, at times this manages to look jaw-dropping good, with its lighting and animation. And it's extra impressive considering it's a custom built engine from scratch. And let me just blow your mind just a little bit more. Once you're in the game, there are no loading times. And why is that impressive? Well, let me give you a snip of text the developer sent me. Frog Monster is a Metroidvania first person shooter. You get to find abilities and weapons while you explore a huge cave world, where you play as a frog created by Melora to put a stop to Rooney's terror on the world. Now, some key features of the game are catch bugs with your tongue and equip them as each of them offers different perks and abilities. You get to fight over 20 unique challenging bosses, explore a handcrafted and diverse world, over 100 enemies and bosses. You get to use the portal vine to travel through the world. I mean, come on, this is sounding freaking brilliant. And if you're still unsure, go play the demo that is available right now. Now, my friends, I hope you are as excited as I am for these games. I can't wait to get my hands on them. Expect me to cover some of them and stream some of them. And I will see you in these ones.